Hello again, Roy J. Stott Realtor here with Coldwell Banker Legacy in San Angelo. Today I want to continue my series on healthy livings. It'll be baby step number four. One quick tidbit before I get into this one is back to last week's baby step three and veggies. Just to, to say something I forgot to say last week. Potatoes and corn are not veggies. I don't care what anybody tells you, they're not vegetables. The, the nutritional profile of them, their starches, they have a totally different effect on your body than, than vegetables. So don't include them in the list of things to eat lots and lots of. Now you can eat them, I mean they're not like they're infinitely bad for you or anything like that, but there's some negatives to them as well as the positives. So treat them with a little little you know questioning and stuff just because of the high carb content that you get with them. So today it's baby step number four, exercise. Exercise you know, the conventional wisdom is exercise is good for you, and it is. I want to just hit some some different things that you might not have thought about with it. One of the things that, that comes up to me is always interesting is people think of exercise as a way to lose weight. And it can be helpful in that. But one of the things years ago when I noticed, okay, I'm a little overweight and I would get out and start running and stuff. Well, what happened was I firmed up, I toned up. I got in better shape, but I didn't lose weight. Now, some of it was converting fat to muscle in small amounts, but there was just like a level of fatness that I couldn't get below just by exercise. And as I've continued to study it over the years, I've seen that that's a, a common pattern. So it's just a mindset. We think that exercise is the first step for weight loss. And honestly, exercise for weight loss is a very small part of the picture. But exercise is very important to your overall health picture. So for weight loss, you're gonna have to change what you put in your mouth, basically. That's, that's where the majority of the work of weight loss is gonna happen, is changing the things you, that you eat and drink. And that's why I started with those baby steps first and got into this one later on in the process. So yes, exercise was a good supplement to that, but it is not the primary thing. Another little thing I wanna kinda of break out, a lot of people talk about, you know, the, how they define exercise. And if you think about what our bodies were designed for, I mean, physical labor was very common up until the last hundred years for, for most people. And there was a variety of physical labor. It was part of every day. Or, you know, going out and getting one hour of intense exercise in the morning or evening or whenever your time is, and then spending the rest of the day sitting is, is not good. So that's not the ideal, but sometimes, you know, you, you've got to be spending those hours at a desk. If you have a desk job, there's not a ton of ways around that. There are some, and I'll mention one of them, but there's, there's not a huge ways around it. So you're just gonna have to deal with that. But as more as you can spread that over the day and make it part of your normal routine, it is much more effective than just one time that you're going out and exercising. Uh, and one of those things that is uh, standing up. There's, there's standing desks you can buy now, or even the, the balls if you're sitting. So just some variety in your, in your time that you have to be at your desk. Well, if you have a, a desk, and I've got one that's a standing desk that raises and low stand, sit or stand desk, raises and lowers, and so I can be standing most of the day, and then if I get tired of standing, I can sit down. I've got one of the, the exercise balls to sit on that kind of keeps you off balance a little bit so you have to kind of be actively sitting instead of just passively resting in the chairs. I've got a, a friend that's a ergonomicist, used to work for Ethicon out here and, and he wrote a book years ago on, on the issues and what happened is people started having more and more desk jobs and they started sitting more and they get back pains and body issues and so the ergonomicist's first solution was well, let's make the chairs more comfortable. So they made the chairs fit your body so then people didn't get up as much. And so the problem just continued. So his book even written years ago, probably 10 years ago or so he wrote the book was called Stand to Lose. And he just talked about how the average person could probably lose 10 pounds a year just by working from a standing desk most of the time. So just things to think about. Uh, I wanna try to separate, you've heard people talk about moving or about walking as exercise. And walking and movement, to me are a separate category. Exercise has to be at least a moderate level of intensity. Walking and, and just movement, I mean, if you have a desk job, you know, get up every 45 minutes, just walk for five minutes, do some stretches, whatever, come sit back down, if that's what, you know, what you need to do. Just something to just keep your body actively moving. Walking and stuff like that's very good for your body, but it's not exercise. Exercise needs to be at least moderately intense. 
uh, more and more evidence it doesn't need to be as as long in time periods when you're exercising as has been previously thought especially if you put some serious bouts of high intensity into it the interval training things like that they get the intensity level real high for a short period of time as short as 30 seconds and then a little bit of recovery time and go at it again the other thing is important with exercise is variety our bodies weren't made to do the same thing all day every day or the same type of exercise all day every day one of the interesting statistics that's come out in the last several years is that they've done some studies on the heart health with regards to long distance runners, probably marathoners, that type of stuff. And that, those people tend to, if they've been doing that, that lifestyle for a while, tend to have serious heart issues. So our, our body was just not made for that long-term, high mileage, one speed, continual cardio type exercise. And the cardio is great for you in short bursts. And that's the way our body's designed. The human body's designed for burst stuff. It works great. And then the cardio helps build up your endurance so that you can do more burst or longer burst. So, you know, mix up some weights, some cardio, running, sprints, biking, all those things. The more variety you can get, the more your body will, will see the results because it, it, it keeps you in a state of your body in a state of guessing. It's like it's building up all these muscles and trying to strengthen them and and it's not just in one area. And so that's a very important way to look at exercise. So exercise has tons of benefits and builds your immune system up, it strengthens your body, it literally lengthens your life. I mean, you can look, if, if you go out and spend an hour exercising hard, you may have lengthened your life by another 10 or 15 minutes every time you do it. And it's substantial the effect it, it can have. And it does have an impact, it's an integral part of weight loss, but it just can't be primary. So. Anyway, exercise again, most, a lot of this is conventional wisdom, but there's some things I hope I've shed a little bit of light on and just different ways of looking at it. So, if you have any questions, give me a call, 325-268-0775, Realtor. thanks.